You're watching News at 10 on my free view channel with me, Renee Fong. Conditional Movement Control Order, CMCO, will be imposed in Kampung Pandang Cik Mas Baling Kedah beginning 18 October and is expected to end on 31st October. Senior Minister of Security, Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob, said the decision was made due to 25 positive cases recorded through targeted screening in the locality until 12th October. Dato Sri Ismail added that in the same period, 236 individuals were screened and were ordered to undergo home quarantine. They were also given the pink quarantine bracelet. Sidang khas hari ini telah bersetuju untuk melaksanakan Perintah Kawalan Pergerakan Bersyarat ataupun PKPB di Kampung Padang Cik Mas, daerah Bali, Kedah yang akan mula berkuat kuasa pada 18 Oktober 2020 sehingga 31 Oktober 2020. PKPB ini akan melibatkan seramai 1,150 penduduk dan 151 buah rumah di kawasan tersebut. The SOP set will be the same as other areas put under CMCO, which are no movement from and into the area. Only two family members are allowed to buy food supply and necessities. But economic activities such as fishery and agriculture sector are allowed to operate as usual by adhering to SOPs. Meanwhile, 481 individuals were held yesterday for violating Recovery Movement Control Order RMCO rules. 470 of them was compounded, 10 were remanded and one was released on bail. According to Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri, the most frequent offences detected was not wearing face masks. Aside from that, failure to comply to physical distancing SOPs and business premises, not providing the right facilities, record customer details were also among the offences detected. Meanwhile, in Op Benteng, 37 illegal immigrants and three skippers were detained yesterday. Also seized in the operation were six vehicles. Malaysia continued to record a high number of new COVID-19 cases with the Health Ministry reporting 629 cases and six deaths today. Health Director General Tan Sri Dr. Nor Hisham Abdullah said Sabah continued to record the highest number of cases with 489 or 77.7% of the total number of cases. He said a total of 245 patients recovered, putting the total number of recoveries to date at 12,259 or at a rate of 65.4%. The total number of active cases in the country now stands at 6,323. Tansri Dr. Norhisham also said three new clusters were detected today, all of which were in Peninsula Malaysia. Cluster baru yang pertama ialah cluster Likir. Kluster baru ini melibatkan daerah Manjung di negeri Perak. Black case index bagi kluster ini iaitu kes 17,526 telah dikenal pasti positif COVID-19 hasil saringan individu, individu bergejala pada 14 Oktober 2020 dan telah dimasukkan ke Hospital Raja Permaisuri Bainun Ipoh. Saringan kontak rapat telah mengenal pasti 5 lagi kes positif COVID-19. The second cluster was the Buntar cluster detected in Kuala Muda, Kedah, Kerian Pera and Putrajaya, whereby the third cluster was the Merbok cluster detected in Selangor in the districts of Kuala Langat, Klang, Kuala Selangor and Petaling. Of the total 629 new cases today, two were imported cases from New Zealand and Singapore. Both cases are recorded in Kuala Lumpur. The rest are all local transmissions involving 577 Malaysians and 50 foreigners, he said, adding that 16 of them are returnees from Sabah. The country's cumulative total cases since the outbreak began in January is 18,758. There are 99 patients being treated at intensive care units, with 31 of them requiring ventilator support. The six deaths meanwhile involve five Malaysians in Sabah and a foreigner in Kuala Lumpur. 
public transport services in the city recorded a drop of over 30 percent in daily passenger volume following the enforcement of conditional movement control order, the MCO, in Klang Valley on Tuesday. Prasarana Malaysia Berhad Chairman Datuk Sri Tajuddin Abdul Rahman said the number included light rail transit LRT, mass rapid transit MRT, monorail and buses under the company. He said the number of daily rail commuters before CMCO averaged 800,000 per day and it had decreased to over 500,000 now, while bus passenger volume was down to around 200,000 uses per day. We used to transport about uh, 600, 700, so drop no, think, uh, 30% and tinggal lagi 200 something. Yeah, 260. So drove about 400,000. So the big um, excess capacity of the train and the buses, which we have to bear, you know, for the sake of the riot. Right. Datuk Sri Tajuddin said this after spending more than an hour monitoring standard operating procedure SOP compliance among passengers and workers while taking public transport. Also present was Prasarana Malaysia Berhad President and Group Chief Executive Officer Muhammad Nizam Alias. The tour began from Pusat Bandar Damansar MRT Station to Masjid Jami LRT Station. He said Prasarana would ensure cleanliness of its vehicles and stations, including steering wheels, escalators, lifts and ticketing machines machines to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Among the SOPs are providing disinfectant liquid and scanning body temperature besides continuous announcement to remind users to observe physical distancing. He said Prasarana would also ensure its staff at stations to wear masks, rubber gloves when necessary and to check body temperature before starting work. According to Datuk Sri Tajuddin, rapid bus service also use Google Map. Move it, my rapid bus kiosk application to help users plan trips to avoid waiting for too long. He said only bus captains who pass COVID-19 screening are allowed to drive the bus. Yang di Pertuan Agong Al-Sultan Abdullah Riayatuddin Al-Mustafa Billah Shah today advised all politicians in the country to engage themselves in self-reflection so that the country would not be dragged into political uncertainty. Comptroller of the Royal Household of National Palace, Dato Ahmad Fadil Shamsuddin, in a statement said His Majesty gave the advice as the country is already facing various problems due to the COVID-19 outbreak. Dato Ahmad Fadil said Al Sultan Abdullah also urged all members of parliament to show maturity in politics and to understand the grievances of the people and not to neglect the public well being. His Majesty stressed that politicians should not end their disagreement in opinions with hostility but instead to resolve problems through consultation and legal process as enshrined in the federal constitution. Al Sultan Abdullah also called on the people to pray for Malaysia to be blessed with peace and serenity so that the prosperity of the country and the people are always protected. The government is expecting the unemployment rate to drop to 4.5% by December following the implementation of Human Resources Development Fund HRDF under the National Economic Recovery Plan, Panjana. Human Resources Minister Datuk Sri M. Saravanan said the unemployment rate in the country was 5.3% in May. However, Datuk Sri Saravanan said the rate has dropped to 4.7% in September, although the country is currently facing economic crisis and the COVID-19 pandemic. According to the minister, unemployment rate will continue to decrease to 4.5% by December. He said with the assistance such as the Panjana HRDF, the ministry is able to produce creative, productive and competitive human capital. Datuk Sri Saravanan said this when launching the Panjana HRDF initiative program virtually in Bukit Murtajam, Pulau Pinang. The Panjana HRDF, which was announced on 22nd June, was implemented to help address the issue of unemployment due to the pandemic. Five schemes have been introduced under the program, namely Training and Placement, B40 Development, SME Development, Industrial Revolution 4.0 and Gera Insan Gemilang GIG. 
The Battle of Sessions Court today set 18 December for case management of the corruption and money laundering charges faced by former Pulau Pinang Chief Minister Lim Guan Eng, his wife Betty Chu Gek Cheng and businesswoman Pang Lee Kun. Judge Ahmad Azari Abdul Hamid set the date after Deputy Public Prosecutor S. Selvaranjini from the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission MSEC in Council Arsene Raya requested new dates for the case management when the matter came up for mention today. Selva Ranjini informs the court that the prosecution needed more time as there were still some documents that they had not given to the defence. While Ryer said the defence would need time to study the documents submitted by the prosecution. Lim, his wife and Pang were not in court as they had been exempted from attending today's proceeding. Last 11th August, Lim was charged in his capacity as the Chief Minister of Pulau Pinang and Chairman of the Penang Development Corporation PDC Procurement Board then with using his position for gratification involving 372,009 ringgit for his wife through a company, Excel Property Management and Consultancy Sunan Berhad. It was to ensure magnificent emblem Sunan Berhad was offered an invitation to propose a workers' village worth 11.61 million ringgit where Chu indirectly had interest. Pang has charged with abetting Lim in committing the offence. Meanwhile, Chu pleaded not guilty to three counts of money laundering by receiving 372,009 ringgit from a company through her bank account. Lim, 60, Chu, 56 and Pang, 48, pleaded not guilty to all the charges made against them. Coming up, Joho police sees drugs worth more than one million ringgit. A suspect who allegedly assaulted a fireman at Jalan Suakaseh Bandar Tun Hussein on Selangor in a viral video have been arrested. Kajang Police Chief ACP Mohamad Zaid Hassan in a statement said the suspect will be remanded for four days to assist with investigation on the incident. In the video, a fireman was seen dousing the flame on a car which was caught on fire in a road crash. The suspect in his 30s who claimed to be the car owner attempted to approach the burning vehicle. When he was ordered to not get close by a fireman, the suspect became aggressive and attacked the fireman by punching him on the left arm. The suspect then was apprehended by the fire team with the help of public. Earlier, the car drove by suspect crashed into two vehicles causing a massive damage and was caught on fire. Urine tests found that the suspect was positive under the influence of methamphetamine. The case is currently being investigated under Section 186 and 363 of the Penal Code and also Section 42 subsection 1 of the Road Transport Act 1987. The police have launched a manhunt for a suspect in an online gambling and Macau scam syndicate who fled after being released on bail by the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission MACC last Sunday. Bukit Aman Criminal Investigation Department Director Datuk Huzir Muhammad said the suspect is identified as Go Leong Yong, aged 32, whose last known address was Miharja Condominium in Churas, Kuala Lumpur. Commenting further on the matter in a statement released, Dato Huzir said Go was involved in online gambling in Kuala Lumpur and Selangor. He is wanted for investigation in three cases under Section 4, Subsection 1, Subsection C of the Common Gambling Houses Act 1953. Members of the public with information on the suspect's whereabouts are advised to contact the Churas Criminal Investigation Division or the nearby police station. On Sunday, Go escaped from police custody by climbing over the fence at the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission headquarters with the help of his two personal bodyguards upon being released by the MACC. A total of 26 Indonesians believed to be illegal migrants were detained in Desaru, Johor early this morning. The arrest was conducted by the Malaysian Infantry's 3rd Division after two days of surveillance. 
The detainees aged between 20 and 49 years old were successfully caught at 5 a.m. this morning. At the time, they were believed to be waiting for a boat, which would bring them back to their country of origin through an illegal route. Also seized were cash totaling more than 20,000 ringgit and 34 cell phones. All those arrested were taken to the Tanjong Sepang Tactical Headquarters for COVID-19 screening before being handed over to the Immigration Department. Police have arrested six suspects, including an Indonesian national, and seized drugs worth more than one million ringgit in two separate op operations in Muar. Johor Police Chief Dato Ayub Khan Maidin Piche said those arrested, including a woman, were between the ages of 20 and 39 on suspicion of smuggling drugs into a neighboring country. He said in the first operation, police launched three raids in Mua on Tuesday. Marine police arrested two local men aged between 24 and 32 after they behaved suspiciously in waters of Barit Sakai, where checks on their small boat found 1.07 kilogram of shabu. A follow-up investigation was carried out, which led police to arrest two more suspects, a 31-year-old woman and her 20-year-old nephew. Briefing reporters today, Dato Ayub said that interrogation on the suspect brought the police to a coconut plantation where they seized another 14.6 kilograms of shabu and 9,905 pills of ecstasy. He added that the drug seizure was worth 924,190 ringgit. Police also seized two boats, a Produa Viva and a motorcycle, all worth 50,000 ringgit. Meanwhile, in the second operation, Dr. Ayub said police arrested two suspects aged between 34 and 39, including an Indonesian national in Mua on Wednesday. <laughs> Tadi pun saya nyatakan dua suspek awal kita tangkap tu, yang wanita dan lelaki tu, mereka ni saudara mengawal dia berada di Bengkalis. So itulah uh, MO yang digunakan, dadah daripada KL sampai ke Muar ataupun Betul Pahat, daripada sana akan terus disuduk ke Bengkalis tuan, untuk uh, pasaran di Indonesia. He added that they also seized 3.1 kilogram of shabu worth 124,000 ringgit from the two suspects in the operation. All suspects were being remanded until 20 of October to help with the investigations under Section 39B of the Dangerous Drugs Act 1952. Counterfeit sports apparel seized from last year's Pesta Pulau Pinang 2019 was put through the shredding machine to ensure they never see the market. The imitation goods in the form of sports shoes, jerseys and handbags bearing famous brands were among items worth more than one million ringgit destroyed by the Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs Ministry, KPD and HEP in Pulau Pinang this year. The Ministry State Director Mohamed Rizwan Abdul Ghaffar said it had seized 1.94 million ringgit worth of goods last year and a portion of it came from the annual event in Sungai Nibong in Georgetown. Pada hari ini, ya, barang-barang yang akan diluputkan kebanyakannya mengakumi barang-barang oleh pakaian. Ya. Uh, seperti kasut sukan, uh, selipa, seluar sukan, seluar jean, t-shirt, uh, beg tangan uh, dan juga jersey yang melibatkan pelbagai conference at the ministry's depot in Bukit Minyak today. He said that this year, the agency has disposed 1.01 million ringgit worth of goods seized from 109 cases. To date, the ministry inspected 37,094 premises throughout the state, which saw 441 compounds amounting to 161 thousand and five hundred and fifty issued apart from counterfeit apparel products pirated dvds weighing scales and instant noodles were also disposed of after scoring his first competitive league goal for Belgium club Kiev Kontrich, Malaysian's young starlet Lukman Hakim Shamsudin says he is getting more in tune with his fellow under-21 teammates. The former Mokhtar Dahari Academy AMD trainee also expresses his excitement after successfully opening a goal account in the match after previously scoring goals in friendly and warm-up matches. Now for the first 
for the first uh, 2020 for the first official game for me yeah 2000 2020 the first official game for me and yeah first goal i'm very happy of course new teammate new team yeah i'm very happy also the winning goal yeah <laughs> also the winning goal Lukman Hakim also shared the joy through his Twitter account while expressing his gratitude towards his family and supporters for encouraging and praying for him. In a league match against KFCO Birshad Werich, the 18-year-old striker displayed his destructive instinct when he scored the winning goal through a header in the 83rd minute to help the team to a 1-0 victory. For the record, the 1-0 victory was the fourth victory scored by the B21KV Cottridge squad after going through six matches and saw the club now in fourth place with 14 points. And that concludes this evening's News at 10. In our top story, King repeats call to not plunge nation into political uncertainty again. Join us again at 12.30 tomorrow afternoon for more global updates. I'm Renee Fong. Stay tuned to Saluran Berita RTM and have a pleasant evening.